The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 365 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is an entrepreneur and online educator, and I'm just excited to have her on today and share her story. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Louisa Jo. Louisa, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, Sheena. Thanks for having me here. And absolutely, I'm happy to share a little bit more about myself. Like you said, I'm an entrepreneur. My current business is an online education business where I show men and women how to turn their skills from their jobs, their just life experience, whatever skills they have, and monetize them to create their own online businesses, whether that's a service-based business or an education business that really has the potential to exceed their nine to five incomes. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Louisa, what's your cultural background? Yeah, absolutely. So I was raised in Texas. So I guess more than anything, I consider myself at the core a Texan. But my parents were or are Asian, are Asian immigrants. So that absolutely influenced a lot of my childhood growing up as well. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is not necessarily about self-confidence, but more about, I mean, it's really straightforward. It's actually not even a quote. It's Nike's slogan, just do it. I think that there is a lot of information out there about, you know, taking the time to find your self-confidence and letting it come to you. And I believe that absolutely self-confidence is something that you develop over time. But at the same time, there's this chicken and egg problem. And what I found for myself and for the students that I've supported is that it really comes as a result of taking action. And so instead of waiting for the self-confidence to to develop, what I prefer is to do it and then let the confidence happen as a result of it. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I agree with you with just doing it, even if it scares us to death, right? Sweaty palms, you know, stomach, butterflies in our stomach. I mean, we all go through it, but just taking that action, no matter what happens and we keep on doing it, that fear will go away and we become more confident. So great quote. And what would be your definition of self-confidence? My definition of self-confidence would be believing that you have the ability to do whatever it is that you want to do as long as you are willing to pay the cost. So knowing that it's not when you want something, it's not about external circumstances. Yes, I'm not saying they don't play a factor, your your background, your education, your skills, but more important than anything than any of that is that I truly believe if there's something you want in life, it's about figuring out how do you achieve it? How have others achieved it? What's the price that they've paid to get it? And believing that if you truly want it, it's about you being willing and able to pay that price versus relying on external circumstances or blaming others or external factors for not being able to accomplish what you want. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great definition. I think people forget that, you know, we might have to sacrifice something to get what we want. You know, if it's something as simple as losing weight, we have to cut out the junk food, right, <laughs> to, to attain that better health and lifestyle. And, you know, um, some people do feel like they're just waiting for something to happen, not realizing, like, if we go out there and, you know, we're going to have to go through some obstacles, it's worth it. That's why it's considered the road less traveled. So I really like that definition that you mentioned. And Louisa, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Yeah, I would say there was a lot of fear. And I'm sure that's not surprising. But there was just a lot of fear and a lot of doubt whether I there was a doubt 
in, you know, anything that I, I wanted to pursue. I'm not saying that there's no doubt now, but there was a lot more back then when I thought about even if I was asking for a promotion, even if I was thinking about starting my business, whatever it was, there was always this fear that I wouldn't be good enough, that people would laugh at me, that I had this personality that was a burden because I'm an introvert. I'm not very good at self-promotion. And there was just always this belief that, well, maybe this is the best it's going to get. This is this is as good as it's going to be. And I think that, yeah, that very much sums up what my life was like before going on this journey of discovering my self-confidence. And afterwards, it's just more about, like I said before, figuring out what the price you have to pay to get somewhere and being able and willing to pay it. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think that's most people, they fear that. I mean, they go through that, right? The fear, the self-doubt, the the settling, right? Thinking this is it. You know, there's nothing better out there, especially growing up Asian, right? It's like you follow this one course and if you don't follow it, it's like hell breaks loose. <laughs> but I mean, we all go through it. And, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you were more than that? You can be the person you are today. What was that aha moment? Biggest aha moment I've ever gotten was... When I was starting my career coaching business and I wasn't sure anyone would want to pay me. And so, you know, it was all this moment of self-doubt, all of this, yes, I want to do this, but I don't know if I really can. All of these things that I'm sure many of us have experienced before. And the aha moment was when I was sharing with someone who I thought might be interested in what I had to offer. And she just said without hesitation, yes, let's do it. And I later asked her, you know, why was it just such a such a fast yes for you? And she said, well, it's because of how much you've accomplished. I wanted to learn from someone who's already done it, how to get the great salary, how to get a manager role, how to transition industries. And you were basically the shortcut, all of your experience, all of the years that you've put in were basically the shortcut that I was willing to pay the price for, to invest in. And that aha moment kind of just was a wake up call for me. It was like, okay, you, you're serving, you're providing value. You have a lot of value to give and that's worth something that's worth a lot to the world, to, to the people you're going to help. And you have to realize that no one, no one is going to, going to fight that and argue for that for you. So you have to realize that. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, that's a great story, especially, you know, when moments of self-doubt and there's people out there who see us in a totally different way, right? They see us as maybe someone who's accomplished, maybe someone who's successful, but then we do the great comparing game, right? We compare ourselves to someone else and we just feel like we're not as worthy, not realizing like there's people out there who want to work with you, who want your advice, who want your value and are willing to pay for it because they know where you've been. And because of that, what's your life been like now? Yeah. So I would say life is more about what's possible versus what's impossible. That's the best way to describe it. I used to think that when I used to think about a problem or a goal, the first thoughts that would come up would be why it's not possible, why it's so hard. And now when I think about it, it's more about how am I going to get there? What do I have to do to get there versus is it possible or not? And that alone has just opened up how the way I the way I pursue my goals. And I'm not saying it was an easy process. It was definitely a very hard one. But that is the biggest change that has just completely transformed my life. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's great that you mentioned that the way you think now, right, what's possible, because a lot of us feel like, We don't have the answers, but if we just start asking the right questions, you know, the answers will come to us. Like what you mentioned, you start, you know, thinking differently and all these things start attracting to you because you started asking the right questions. So I'm really great that, you know, you're able to share that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? The biggest tip I have to give is... I think there's this common misconception that the people we admire who have achieved what we want to achieve started out with this incredible amount of confidence or brilliance or luck. And what it's hard to imagine to realize is that most of them most likely, now I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't (laughs) know exactly what they were thinking, but most likely they had the same fears that we do. And it's not about being born without fear. It's about 
taking that first step despite it, and then earning the right to develop that self-confidence. Self-confidence doesn't come from meditation or waiting for it to happen or hoping or praying. The fastest way to get it, I'm not saying the only way, but the fastest way is to take the action. And if you do, that first step, despite that lack of self-confidence, will be so much more powerful for helping you achieve your dreams and for overcoming your fears than anything else that you can think of. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And it's so true. All it takes is that first step, no matter how scary it is, no matter if, you know, we have all these crazy thoughts in our heads, just taking that first step will kind of like shut them up. So thanks for sharing that great tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a few. The first and easiest link to find me at is at LuisaJo.com. That's L U I S A Z H O U dot com. And that's my website. And I've also got a really great training. For, it's a free training for anyone who's interested in starting their own service based coaching or consulting business. And that can be found at LuisaJo.com slash Y F PC training. So if anyone's interested in potentially starting their own business, that's a great free training to help them get started. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Louisa, you can also head on over to thetowselfconfidence.com and search for Louisa's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Louisa for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Louisa. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for inviting me to be here. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence and we'll catch you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.